Hey guys, so welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a video. I appreciate y'all being here. And this is going to be part two in this 1950 RCA uh, All-American 5 that has a nice large speaker in it. Sounds really good. And we're going to finish up doing the work on this. We finally got it to work last time. Now we got to do a lot of work to get it working correctly. And we'll get into that. It's been several months since I've done a video. I appreciate y'all coming back in. And uh, I may tell you a little bit about some of the stuff I've been doing since then. I've done a number of projects. I've videoed most of them, and I may eventually put them up, and you'll see them uh, in the future. And uh, you'll see this in at least one of them uh, being used for the speaker, and we'll see how it goes. But meanwhile, we're going to get back into this thing right here. If you remember last time, we talked about the way the tuning capacitor is in here crooked because it had some homemade grommets in there. Well, I ordered some new grommets, and so we're going to see if these fit and put them in. I think I've got two different sizes, just to be sure. Yeah, and uh, we'll put them in, and we'll see if they work. So we've got a number of things we're going to do with this. Let me prop this back up, and we'll take a look at the underside here. Now, you may remember, let me zoom you in. See? So you may remember on this, you know, one of the things was, is has anybody been in here before? And it ended up being a whole list of things. I think I counted six things that as I went through indicating somebody had been here before. The first one was I noticed that the filter cap had had some soldering redone on it. Then I noticed that the coupling cap, I've since replaced it, but the uh, coupling cap for the audio output uh, tube had been replaced. So we know that had been done. Uh, that the bulb the bulbs that are here on the dial, one of them had been changed and was incorrect. Uh, and let's see what else. We the tuner string is on backwards. It's supposed to come from the. This should be on the inside and wrap the opposite way around. So the result is is that the dial moves in the opposite direction, which you would normally expect. And then also, uh, there's homemade grommets in here for holding the tuning condenser. If you see it in there, they're they're homemade. And so as a result, they don't do a good job of holding the tuner straight. And what happened as a result is, is when they put the, the dial string on it, you can see how crooked it is. And it may even be dragging against the chassis. I was noticing some, some static that indicated maybe it was touching. So uh, we've got a lot to re res uh, resolve with that. All right, so what we decided we're going to do is, is I'm going to remove the tuner and put the, try those new grommets out. And then I'll remount the tuner and get the restringing done and see if that works. Now... I am going to go through and check all the resistors that are in here. I'm not going to bother you with that unless I find something interesting. I'm also going to replace the capacitors that are in here. Same sort of thing. And then we've got the right size bulbs in there. And then I'm going to use my usual rewiring. I'll put in another another cord. I'll put in a thermistor and a fuse. And then we'll get this thing aligned or at least check it. And uh, then we'll see what we do after that. We may try to see if we can do something about cleaning up this pretty cool looking case. So hang on. We'll see if we can get this all done in one episode. If not, we'll get it in two, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So hang on. Let's get started. Okay, so I found my notes from when I was working on this in the first part, and I can see the voltages that I had measured at the plates. You know, here's uh, should be 93. I got 86. Should be 93. I got 86. Uh, should be, what is that, 61. I got 59. Should be 107. I got 103. Uh, should be 121. I got 113. I mean, these are all within the range that they're giving us here, which is, you know, plus or minus 20% right here. So, you know, I, I'm thinking that the resistor check is going to be pretty non-eventful. So I'm going to go through and check them all, uh, but I'm not going to bother uh, making you watch all that. But uh, I'll go through and check all these and see if I see anything really out. But like I say, these numbers are all right where they ought to be, so I'm not expecting anything unusual there. Okay, we'll get started here. What we got here... Uh, 220k hmm it's uh, got a capacitor across it so that one's going to be you need to lift the lead to check that one out I suppose it's okay I'll be replacing that capacitor soon anyway well I had more problems with the resistors than I expected that's for sure with the voltages I was getting I end up with four that I'm going to change uh, this one here is supposed to be an 82 I got 214 um, we had one here at 150, it measured 225. This uh, 1000 uh, ohm, one watt is measuring uh, 1.2, and it's a 10%, so I'm going to change that. And uh, which one did I miss? Is it this one? 
should be 150 and get 225. So I've got those all flagged. I think I'm on the one for 225 now. Is that right? So it's measuring okay. No, that's supposed to be 150. That's just one. That's that 150. And I'm measuring 225. Right. That's the one I'm gonna. That's, I'm gonna change that one too. So the ones that need to be changed, I put little yellow flags on them to help me remember. So that when I go in and I do the capacitors. Uh, which resistors I need to change. And I've, I've got them over here. The the one watt I've got, I'm going to replace with a three watt because that's just what I had. Uh, the rest of them are, are fairly comparable uh, in terms of what values are in there. So um, next one to do is start going in there and looking at the capacitors. I'll lift this lead to see if this one here is okay. It was at 220K and we'll check on that one. Uh, but right now I'm not able to measure it. The capacitor seems to, I guess, be leaking enough to allow me to have trouble measuring that. Right? The capacitor's like a dead short across it. Pretty cool, huh? Not. All right. Okay, so I got this lifted. This guy here is a 220K. Right? This is the one that I had going across this other capacitor tied back to ground. So that's over here at the... Uh, chassis to floating ground connection that's that uh 220k right there now that i've listed the lifted the lead you know hey it's fine it's within 20 percent okay now let's check that 0.1 capacitor there that would be your potential death capacitor there right because you get your lead coming in here goes to that ground symbol and goes to the chassis let's check out what that guy is let's see Checking the ohms on the ohmmeter should be putting out DC, right? So this should be, it says no DC getting through me, right? 0.1 ohms <laughs> across the capacitor. <laughs> you think it's leaky at this voltage? Are you kidding me? That's a dead short. Amazing. He'll be coming out. He'll be staying. Check this out, right? Point 0.1 ohms. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so I've gone in there and uh, changed the, uh, the capacitor to chassis with a, a Y2 safety capacitor, and it's in place. It's, uh, put this one back in, in where it was. I removed this one, which is uh, a 0 0.05. I used the hot air gun to blow off the, the uh, value of that, and this one's very leaky as well. Um, but when I pulled this one out, it allowed me to see the grommet screws. And one of the first things you may notice is one of them is missing. <laughs> Wonderful. Fun and games are beginning. Okay, so I guess it's time for me to, maybe while I had these off, I should have done it. But go ahead and get this one loose in here and uh, get these off and go ahead and get the tuner off. So, uh, like I say, I probably should have done that before I nailed this down. But anyway, we'll get that off and... Get the tuner off and we'll start seeing what we're getting in there and see how we can do something about what we have happening. Okay. It'll loosen up what we have here. We're going to see what somebody did here, aren't we? Okay, we've got the screw. We have the terminal tie strip. We've got a little rubber. Is that rubber? No, it's metallic. Got a little 
lock washer. And then we've got this. And then we get the other half in there. This one. I guess I need to go ahead and unstring this. So, back you up a little bit. So, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there's a spring right here to provide a little bit of slack right here. That's going to cause that to come loose. Okay, let's get you up here where you can see. Okay, so that's what's left of our grommets that were there. This is just petrified. Okay, let me see what we can do to get rid of that stuff. I have to do some work to get these uh, cleaned off a little bit, but I'm just kind of curious, you know, if the grommets that I purchased are going to work. One of the things that's nice is that I don't have to line up the the hub with like a dial face, so that really reduces a lot of the restriction on how high the grommets are. They just need to do their job of insulating and supporting it, holding it straight, I think. Okay, we got those all taken care of. So if you can see, I wonder if I was being a little unkind saying it was homemade, but I don't think I am. I mean, I don't mean to be unkind, but I'm just saying I think this part of this is homemade. Let's see. So they got this little piece of rubber on here that's been cut. I think that's glued. Okay. We got that out of there. And here's the part. Well, let's see. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Otherwise, we might be making our own. <laughs> let's see. Here's one here. Well, that looks pretty sloppy to me. 
That looks pretty sloppy. Well, I think I got two sizes here. Let me see what else I got. I think that was the small one. I think these other ones are too big. Yeah. Hmm. You think that when they're put in there and they're smashed, they take up the space? I don't know. I would like to have held it a lot tighter than that. I'm gonna put one in and see if maybe it tightens up when you pop it into this into the place. Into place. Let's see. I don't know, that looks too small all the way around. These are too big. Alright, let me see what else I can do. Okay, so I got these guys all pulled out and knocked all the crumbly plastic off of rubber pieces and whatever these things are. All right, so let's go into the grommet kit, huh? Like I say, all of these I bought, uh, and I'm, I got two sizes, all right? But neither one of them is the right size for the uh, middle bit that we want to hold securely. And I think that the gap that they're supposed to go in is too big for the hole in the chassis. So I'm going to try to see if I can find one of these here that will work. I can keep those. They'll be fine for other uses. Let's see. See, that's, that's more like it, right? That's more like it. Is there any other size? Let's see. That's too tight. So it's these. 3 eighths, so 3 eighths diameter. 0 0.244 ID, 17 32 OD. Let's see if they're going to fit in the chassis, okay? Let's see here. This is always so much fun. Okay. I'll bring you back when I get this, if I get any success. <laughs> I'll bring you back. All right, I ain't gonna lie, that was a lot of a fight to get those three in there, but they're in, and uh, I've got the other sides in as well. They're stuck in there. Okay, that looks like it's gonna work okay. Uh, was missing a screw. Here's the two that were there. One of them was kind of chewed up. I was missing one, so let me get in my screw stash here. Let's see, I'm going to guess that's a 6, Fits, but it will. Come on. Yeah, that's a good fit. We'll get a washer on that. Alright, 
Shall we see if this will go back down? Or should I clean this off a little bit first? I'm a little impatient, I must tell you, to get this going. Let's see. Let's make sure that screw is going to be long enough. Yeah, that's going to be long enough for that washer, as I was thinking. That's going to be long. I think that's going to hold that uh, tuning condenser just fine. Okay, what I'm going to do is it's kind of late tonight. I'm going to call it for this evening and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on this and then I'll put this back down and then we'll get this uh, string re-threaded re and then so once I get done with that then I'll be able to get in here reattach these leads here that were attached back there and uh, I may have to change the length of some of these get that reestablished and then finish going through change the caps out but uh, save that for tomorrow yeah, I'm not regretting starting this. This brass is so old. I don't think I've used it in about, I don't know, eight years, six years. I'm probably going to immediately regret starting a clean spot on this. I'm not sure this stuff's maybe too old to use. Yeah, let's just see what we get here. I need to shake it a lot more than it's been shaken. So let's just see what we get. Start right here. Okay, this is the part of the evening where you say, What have I done? Let's see if this has done anything good at all. This actually looks pretty good right in here. All right, well I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of this and we'll see what we get. Okay, I hope you like it because that's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> I just I just don't have the patience for doing this kind of stuff. But you know it cleaned up very nice. I think the brasso did pretty well. There's a lot of pitting on the top, and uh, it's never gonna look new. So I don't see any point in getting too carried away with it. But anyway, I'm, I'm just so ready to get on with doing the rest of this. So I think we're going to get ready to do now is to get the tuning condenser back in place and uh, get back to replacing those other resistors and capacitors. So enough of the cleaning, at least for now. And let's get back to work on, on that. So there's our grommets in there. Alright, let's get this dude on there. Okay, so now I've got to get this one here. And you'll notice I've got this capacitor just stuck in here. It's kind of helped me remember where everything goes. All right, and that is actually that point is connected to here, so that is to the chassis of the of the uh, tuning condenser. Okay, so now this guy is going to go into here. Well, that looks straighter, doesn't it? Looks straight across. All right, so let's make sure it's in good shape and we'll start to snug it down. Okay, final snug. Okay. Guys, I think that that's that's going to be good. That's a winner. Anyway, I'll get to this part 
a little bit later. Let's get back onto restringing this, right? Let me get that strung right. Okay, that's in there. I'll put him in later as well. Okay. Let me take the opportunity of this being off to put some shrink up here to protect it from touching that part of the resistor. Okay, so let's get to the stringing here. I need to kind of reconstruct what we had here. Let's see. So this obviously is tripping along on the top here and it comes up goes over a wheel here and then let's see here let's get this out of the way now we've got this it's going to come over this way I have these lamps off, so let me just get them out of the way. For now. Just make sure they're not interfering with what I'm doing. So this goes here. This slips under here. And we stretched the spring. Alright. So this needs to come over the top. So go down. Sneak behind there. Through here. And over that pulley like that. Alright. I think that's right. So that this can come down here and get onto there. Okay, so I've got it strung right. Okay, so now what we gotta do is get this wound properly. Right here. Alright, what it's supposed to do is unlike the way it is, so you can get you where you can see. Bear with me a minute, I'm gonna crank you up. According to this, it comes off the wheel, next to the chassis, goes counterclockwise three turns. What they had before was not that. So what we're going to do is come over here. See here, it was not next to the chassis. It was away from the chassis. Take that off there. That. Now this goes on here like this. Goes three turns like this. Let's see, that's one, two, did I go one more? Let's see if one more will work. Okay, so we went three turns around. So we started off coming off of here next to the chassis. We went three turns around this post and we come up, we went we went counterclockwise, right? Yep. And then we come off of here away from the chassis, which is correct. And then it goes to this pulley here. All right. And now get the pointer on the scale. So now I'm using this spring right here to give me a little bit of play. That somehow got into the wrong position here. Hang on. 
What is going on here? I gotta get some glasses on so I can see what happened there. Looks like it slipped up onto some of the coils here. We don't want that to happen. Let's see if it's going to work like that. I'm not sure I did that. Maybe it was like that before. Okay, so this goes on to here. Get on there. And then I'm using the stretchiness of this spring to go down to this last pulley. The question is, is that too much? Let's see. We went one. Two, three, well that looks right. I'm going to leave it. I'll come back to it later if I want to. Okay, so that all looks right. Will that stretch far enough? Is that how tight that string was? I'm going to remove a wrap here. And that translates to this moving down. Now, yeah, I think that's better. I'm trying to get on the Hopefully here on the bottom. Okay, I'm on there. Okay, now I mess this up. All right. Let's see. I know some people don't have a lot of patience for doing stringing. I can do stringing without losing my patience too much. I just don't... I lose patience on cleaning. <laughs> okay. Now. This stuff goes onto this pulley here. Okay. Now I think we're good. Now that's working the way it's supposed to, I think. Turn it down and it goes down the dial. Turn it up and it goes up the dial. All right. And we are not dragging anywhere. Okay. We put some lubrication on those points. Looking good. I'll loop bearings on the tuning condenser in a bit. That's just so much better. Okay. So now just to finish up the work here, put this light back on, and this one back on. And there's our speaker leads, so. Oh, there's marks right there. So I've got some locations where I can peg the peg the uh, dial. Can you see the marks? Let's see if I can show you right 
There you go. One, two, three, four. I got some marks there so I can align the pointer with the right place on the tuning condenser. Good deal. All right. Let's get back to what we were doing. And let's see these dial lamps here. That one was a 47. And if we look on the spec sheet. $14.90. Let's get the right bulbs in. I think this was the 47 I put in there for testing. That one is a 1490, by golly. What do we say we leave it in there? I think it was working. Okay. Okay. Let's get the correct bulbs. Okay, so I got all the tubes back in. Got the two light bulbs in. Got the tuning mechanism that works good. Okay, I've got all the tubes back in, got the bulbs in, got the uh, condenser lubricated, everything's moving really nice and smooth. Okay, top side's done. Let us go and look at where we are on the bottom again. Okay. Get our screws in here. Now we need to get back. I need to get back on to putting this back. Put this uh, cap in, and then work my way down. So we go get all this done, and I'll bring you back when I'm finished with that. And then what I think I'm going to do is uh, power it up, make sure this part is working, and then I'll start to move my way down and kind of check it as I go. Okay, so I've got uh, this grouping reattached. I've got uh, this is the two that go from the um, ground to chassis ground, if you will, for the chassis. And then here's the other capacitor put in, change the 82, was it? 82 or 84, whatever it is. I changed 82, I've changed it out. And uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and put power back to it, make sure the radio still works before I continue working through the rest of it. Uh, you may have noticed I've changed my layout here a little bit. And uh, I think we're about ready to go. So be watching this. I have the dim bulb in the circuit and turn the, turn this down. Here we go. Power is on. You see the voltage coming up here I'm about 40 volts. Moving 120 milliamps. I know you can't see that but I'm just telling you. So 60 volts. We have lights on the two bulbs that we installed. 70. Still 140 milliamps. 90 volts, 180. Glow on the rectifier tube. Glow on the uh, audio tube. So the filaments are lit up. Let's see if I lost a line here on my speaker. I sure have. There we go. Him going back to New he still seems to have a good relationship with. does. I also think that part of what 
The Watchdog on Wall Street with Chris Markowski. Chris helps unpack the connection between politics and the economy. One of our options is he's going to come back. Do I have a short at the end of the travel? It's interesting. I'm curious what would happen to the other end of the scale. <laughs> Hey, it's Ramon. The IRS has hired thousands of new agents, and they will go after you. Soon. Feels quite like reaching goal for insight along the way. They allow themselves to to, to maybe grow it. In Saturday night at seven on the CW. So this is the first time I've been able to move this so easily. This is just gliding. Before it was really having to crank it. Well, I, I have a knob on it now too, but. This was dragging, it was pulling too tight. I mean, it was just, it's all pulled over. This is all nice and even now. Looks good. Okay, it looks like I'm shorting out here. I'm going to check that out without the power on it. But everything else seems to be working pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of the... Uh, I'm going to go the rest of the way, voltage. And 120. 220 milliamps. As a, a, a pathetical, as a general manager, but I want to ask you, can you hang on and do another? Without well, never left. Okay. There, there, there's got to be. Gosh, this works. This is what I've been missing all my life. <laughs> I'm loving life actually more than I ever, ever have. I miss... See Notice all the stations I'm pulling in now, I didn't until I turned the voltage up. Okay. Let's, let's get back to finishing the work here. Okay, so I've got uh, this capacitor that comes in off of the uh, RCA plug in the back. Um, got it replaced, replaced resistors in here, replaced the um, 1 watt with a 3 watt here. Uh, I've got this capacitor that's going to go to pin 3 from here. I've got the capacitor for that right here, but I've been studying how to get to uh, several things. One of them is I've got to get to this cap here, right? but I've also got to get into changing this wire, which is part of the power uh, power line coming in as well as this one which goes back in here to the switch okay I'm going to be changing how that's run as well as the way all the grounds are tied on back in here that's going to need to change I need to get to where these electrolytic lines are going I'm going to change this guy out I've got one that's here the other one's here that's not too bad I also need to get to this resistor and I need to get to this capacitor and there's another capacitor back behind this back in there and so you know this is basically looks like an, a you know uh, a sleeve for um, noise suppression I guess 
think what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect it right in here, okay? So I can take this and swing this up out of the way. Then I can get at these here. I have better access into here and to here. And uh, then I'll fold all this back together in. So it will be, this will probably end up going back on last with this, this one here taking its place. So I'm going to disconnect this, pull this up out of the way, and that'll give me access to, you know, here, there, and there. We'll see what's in here. And uh, the, the rewiring here and then getting the, uh, the connections here. This is the ground that goes to one of the connections on the on-off switch, which is located here, right? Well, we're not going to have the switch on the ground. We're going to have the, we're going to put on a polarized plug, right? We're going to come out of here. We're going to go into a fuse. We'll go into a switch. We'll put a thermistor here somewhere. And that'll be um, the hot side. And this will go to ground, which of course goes through our new safety capacitor and a good resistor uh, to chassis. Uh, and then this will be the hot lead going in. That'll then run everything. All right. Um, we'll get to that much later. All right. So I want to get this disconnected and get this up out of the way so we can see what we're doing in here. Yeah, there's a capacitor in here. Okay, all right, so within this tube we can see, maybe we can see, maybe you can see, there's a capacitor in there, I believe. Let's see if we can get that out of here. This is the line that goes from the wiper of the volume control to the uh, plate Sorry, the control grid of the um, detector tube. I guess this is meant as a shielding, uh, but it is tied off. Yeah, I can't just pull that off, pull that out. So there is a capacitor there. So I think what I can do is I can just cut it and pull that capacitor out. Capacitor comes out and voila! 0 0.02 stuffed down inside of this shield, which is just a wound up piece of wire that's connected down here. And that went to the center wiper of the uh, fine control. Okay, so that gets me down to where I can see this guy back down in here. So now I can see a little better. All right, let me get myself readjusted. Okay, so I've been going over, looking at this in detail, and to, trying to develop a plan for what I'm going to do on this. Um, I guess I'll start with the rewiring. Uh, this will be kind of similar to what we've done before. So I mentioned a while ago that... Focus, please. Okay. We don't want to do this where we have the switch going to here, but hot stays connected all the way through here. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewire this. I'm going to put a polarized plug on it. If you remember, the cord on this was dead anyway. So I'm going to put a polarized plug on it. The, the neutral will just go to ground, which is not chassis ground. It's a, it's a floating ground, right? Right here. It's a floating ground. And then the line will come in. It's going to hit a fuse. So I'm going to put a fuse holder in. Then it'll go to the switch. The switch is going to be moved over to that other line. And then I'm going to go into a thermistor. And then that's where it'll now tie into the rest of the circuit. It's right here. I'll put it right here. So, um, as far as CL90 goes, you know, I've seen some people talk about ones to use here. Uh, recently, Bob Anderson was talking about the use of these in, like, Philco television sets. He's by every means possible more of an expert than me on these things. Um, but, you know, the, therm the, the Philcos were designed to have a thermistor in them. So, to match the characteristics of it, particularly in terms of the currents and so forth, I would think would be pretty critical. In this one, you know, you can make the argument, well, we want this thing to basically vanish at the at certain temperature, at certain temperature here where it goes away. But in my case, not really. 
um, I want this thing to not only limit the inrush, but I want it to have some residual resistance to drop the inlet voltage. Okay, so you know I'm running like 123 or something like that here at the house, so I'd like to see it drop it down to 115. And I've done this experiment on some other radios. I think it was the Starlight where I've demonstrated that you know a CL90 seems to work pretty well with sets with have this kind of energy consumption to drop the voltage down into you know this range of voltage which is what I want so that's that's why I'm using it granted you know if you were to use a thermistor purely as inrush limiting it might not be appropriate but I want it to have that residual resistance anyway so that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with it plus you know I, I have a bunch of them so that's what I use okay so that's the plan. We're going to put in a fuse. We're going to move the switch location to the line side. We're going to insult it. Insult. We're going to insult the thermistor further. <laughs> and uh, so, question is, how do we put this in the radio? All right. So, what I've decided to do is okay. So the the switch here has all these ground leads going to it on one of the lines. This is the floating ground, and it's used as a terminal tie post. Okay, so I need to get this off of here because I don't want the the floating ground tied to the switch. I want this to be the line coming in and the line going out. All right, so what I've done is I'm going to need to move everything that's connected to this. So I've put little white flags on the items that are tied to this point because I want to break them all loose. I want to keep track of all the different lines that go to that floating ground from this from this point right here when I disconnect them. Okay. Um, we're going to work at getting this cap out of course, but then also this one that's back down in here. It may be easier for me to take this uh, volume control off and pull it out so I can get to the, you know, bring it in and then turn it like that so I can get to those solder points easier uh, to get that undone so I don't stress those connections in there. Okay, um, the other thing that I need to do is put in a fuse, so I'll use one of these fuse holders. And I believe what I'll do is I'll drill a hole in the side of the chassis here and I'll mount that here. So I'll have the hot lead will come in from the strain relief, which will be here, and it'll come in and I'll bring it to one of these leads. I'll put a fuse in here that seems appropriate, probably half an amp or something like that. And then um, from here, it'll go on to the switch. Okay, from the switch outlet, I'll probably mount the thermistor. I don't think I have it out here right now. I'll mount a CL90 there. And then from there, it'll go to where the line needs to go up here to the uh, um, to the binding post that has both the line going into the uh, rectifier and also to the, uh, uh, the dial lamps, which is right here, right here. Okay, uh, then that leaves the capacitor situation. So I've got the two capacitors that are, lo that are located in here. And this is, as I said, this is not really what's called for. I think this is a, a 60-20. What's called for in the schematic is an 80-50. Uh, so what I have on hand is I've got a bunch of these 47s. So I'm going to use this 47 instead of the 50. And I still don't have any 80s. I guess I should have ordered them by now. But um, I have a bunch of these 47s. So that's why I'm trying to use them up. So I'm just going to do a couple of 47s like this. I'm going to mount them on a terminal strip. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the new floating ground terminal instead of the switch terminal. So all these things in here that have white flags, I'm going to tie to this terminal right here. And I'll have a jumper coming across from here, you know, off the leg of the caps over into here. And then I need to drill a hole. And I guess I'll do it down here to mount this inside here. If I had a smaller 80, I'd prefer to mount the 80 right up in here. But I don't I don't have one, so this is what I'm going to do. And I don't think it's going to cause a problem because this is where this one is here, so the length of that lead is not going to be a problem. So I'll have this hot lead here, if you will, go into the cap tied in here. Okay. Like I say, it's not any worse than what was in there. And then the uh, 47 that takes the place of the 50, I will go ahead and mount right in right in here. It'll go in there. Okay, so that's the plan for that. Once I get these guys mounted on here, I'm going to put some put some shrink on it, and that'll hold them nice and solid and so forth, and they'll be.
attached in there. So that's the plan. I'm not going to show you all the stuff I'm doing going on. I may video it anyway, just in case you can go back and refer to what did I do. If there's something interesting in there, I'll, I'll show it to you. Otherwise, I'm going to get on with this and get going. The more I think about it, I think this might be a good spot to stop this episode. It's gotten long enough. And what we'll do is we'll pick this up in part three. And I may already have some of this done for you by then, uh, but we'll see. So thanks for watching as we go through this. I appreciate it. Uh, watch for part three when it comes out. Appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye.